Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Create Above and Beyond. Why, yes, I am in a minion outfit. Just got done with MCC and I uh, forgot to change my skin afterwards. So make sure to like the video for minions. What better reason could there be? And let me show you what I've been up to since last time. So came back over to the village and I've got a Fletcher over here. I use the Fletcher to do a little bit of trading. Um, some of these emeralds are from it. Others I spent on what I'll show you in just a moment. But I figure, you know, while we're over here, why don't we just do a little bit more stick trading? I'm probably going to have more than I actually need. I grabbed these from our tree farm which has been going for a little bit. I, I haven't done, you know, like days and days of AFKing like we may have gotten with the one block series because, you know, I just, I, I feel like I haven't reached a point where that's quite as necessary yet. However, I'm sure we will reach a point down the road where it does become necessary, but all right, let's keep on trading. What are these new trades as well? Lightning arrow. Calls down a lightning bolt on impact. Fancy. Anyway, now we have 40 emeralds, which is great because it'll allow us to say, if we wanted to go and trade for more mending books, I figure I, I normally would do this like in the episode, but I wanted to be able to use my pickaxe to mine andesite to do prep work and it was getting very very low and I didn't want to keep doing it with like finding a new diamond repairing it in an anvil I just wanted to get some mending so I did it you've seen me cycle in chance before you definitely have so hey man that's so cool that you're offering mending for 16 emeralds also if I wanted to get some quick books right now and just buy one more mending um I could just waste some emeralds rather than just going and please do not let me punch you that would be very bad rather than going and um making it with a cow and our sugarcane farm not really an automated farm, but anyway, I'll show you in just a moment. I don't need to get ahead of myself, but why don't we buy another mending book just to have? And then I've been, you know, offhanding the pickaxe as I mine some ores, some copper, some sardis quartz and stuff like that. Also, though, yeah, I totally missed the part where the chests in the village, they, they have rice in them. Yeah, which I... Uh, so, well, I'll show you, like, I, I got rice in between episodes, but I could have avoided going where I went to get rice, which was, what is this, a grading sleeve? Oh, we can call up PSA and grade our buddy cards. I mean, that's kind of exciting. Of course, we can get another rubber duck, which is pretty cool too. And all right, guys, I'll, I'll see you all later, but yeah, the whole having the rice could have, could have saved me traveling. Well, okay, so here's the thing. Rice grows in jungles and in swamps. So I traveled around and I managed to find a, a swamp and I was able to find some rice there, but it could have saved me a little bit of trouble and headache of doing that whole search and finding the rice. Um, but now I have had a little bit. I don't have very much. It hasn't been farming for a super long time. So anyway, now I'll show you what I've done back at base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. eventually I will encapsulate the shaft so that it looks a little bit better. I swear I'm going to do it. In fact, I've even taken a step of looking into some possible aesthetic upgrades to make things look cool. I'll show you. That said, all right, let's first just take a little look at our kelp, right? So, you know, not too bad. We got a decent amount of kelp, and if we want to start automating that, it's a good source to start piping things out of or conveyor belting out of, however we're going to do it. So here's where I planted the rice that I found. So rice grows in one block deep water, and so you plant it down there, and then it grows up above the water level, and then the top part harvests, and then it regrows from there. Again, this has not been going for a super long time, but... It's there and now we're getting rice so that hopefully we can make the nets over there for the sifters. Also over here, yeah, it just, it keeps, you know, running out of saplings. However, I did look up a little tutorial on how to work deployers to try to automate this and deployers, as it turns out, actually an easier crafting recipe in this. Something with an easier crafting recipe, I know, crazy, right? But an easier crafting recipe, which means that we can actually kind of get into it potentially here in this episode, so. I've just been manually planting things for now, but uh, yeah, try to keep it contained. I think the, oh yeah, that's right. The coarse dirt is the outer bounds of where I want to be placing things. I just, now I'm sawing myself, stop. I just, I did a little outline and as it turns out, I didn't even follow my own outline. I forgot that it was inclusive and not exclusive, but there we go. So manual until further notice, but don't worry, it's on the agenda. Now I also had a little mishap in between episodes where I was just standing here peacefully, minding my own business. Crafting, I think. And then what do I hear? Psss, kaboom. So I got some of my chests and some of the furnaces, blew off some of the signs, one of which being my egg sign. I branched the eggs out into their own chests. So I'm not gonna need to lure chickens back here. I'm just gonna throw their eggs into a new pen whenever I'm ready for that. And it's gonna be very exciting. 
really. So I've also, you know, I've worked on making some more andesite casings, kinetic mechanisms, andesite alloys. I did some mining of andesite so that I could make all this stuff. And I do think the first order of business here that I want to do is to go down and try experimenting with the whole drill setup thing to see if we can make the, the foundations of automating andesite. That said, I also, because I wanted to be able to make some books in order to be able to trade and get mending, I set up a little sugarcane farm over here and boy, oh boy, is it do be growing. Oh, this is pretty cool. I know they definitely can automate this. We could do the old fashioned villa Minecraft way or I'm sure there's a way to set it up with mechanical harvesters, but either way, I did it the optimal maximizing the real estate, and then I capped off the water so that it doesn't fall into the water. Wow, look at me trying to make things nice from the very beginning. How uncharacteristic, you might even say. <laughs> we can see where we're at with our farm, 21 rice. Not a lot, but it'll get us started, I think, at least with a sieving net, which maybe is actually a good thing to start off with. And then that way that can be going in the background while we're working on the andesite down below. That said, OK, look, look at these blocks. These are factory blocks. Don't they look cool? Maybe you remember them from a certain Mayanite setting that is potentially demonetizable or inappropriate but that said I opened up a little chest here the way you make these factory blocks is actually really it's super simple and you get a lot of bang for your buck off of these things right and I didn't even just realize that I can use I don't even have, I don't need to smelt up the stone I could use cobblestone for these just a little bit of cobblestone and I collected a lot more iron in between episodes as well some of it should be smelted up in here there we go quite a bit more that I had queued up ready to rock and roll and look at this look at this factory blocks just like hold on going oh wait it doesn't like oh it doesn't like cobblestone doesn't you know what just kidding i just saw like the diorite and stuff going through and then i was like oh wait a minute those require silk touch in this mod pack so anyway don't worry i've got some stone why don't i just take some of our stone here and for four stone you get 32 it's an 8x multiplier look at that all right, that's a good source of things that I might be able to use in between episodes to say, make this area look more factory-like. And then see, we have the chisel here. And so you throw these in there and you're like, oh, look at all these options that I can make out of just, this is one stack of stone and, and it, well, you know, some iron too, which I don't know if I really should have used that much iron on that because I'm going to need it for other things. So that might not have been the wisest idea or use of resources. But uh, you know what? Now I've got no excuse not to pursue aesthetics. Uh, aren't you proud of me? OK, so in order to make the net for the strainer, we need to put rice through the mill and hope that it doesn't automatically feed it into the spell tree because that that wouldn't happen, right? Like y You wouldn't send the rice into the Oh, it doesn't work, so it's fine. It'll just clog up and we can retrieve it out, so that's perfect. But hey, there we go. It's, okay, so we're getting some straw, we're getting some rice that I could plant from there, and um, cool, actually, hey, that's great. Grasping at straws. So now we already have some of these, and oh wait, how? so what was it, the, because uh, the canvas rug was something that I could use in order to do, okay, right, so it was two of the canvas rugs go into one of them, and then for the other two, I can just do this, and then we can make ourselves the sediment strainer with just a little bit of sticks here, and there we go. Okay, so I don't know if we have to attach this to an inventory or if it holds a buffer in itself. I'm just going to take a chest out to be sure, and then hopefully we can have this. I know we're probably going to end up needing just zillions of these things, and I, I, I don't know if there's either an unbreakable net that you can do at some point or if there's a way to, like, auto-replace, but okay, there we go. Actually, we have it on top of a, a chest, and perfect. It's, it's going. I feel like I've used these at some point before. I don't know if it was Sevtech like way back when, but you can add bait to it and stuff like that. And it does have its own built-in buffer. So let's see what happens when it, I'm drowning. What happens is I'm gonna drown before it fills up. Good, good, good. Let's try this again. And come on, we got white sand, which I assume can be used in the crafting recipes. Like it doesn't specifically have to be, you know, the, the vanilla sand or something, but it does appear to not be going into the chest below. So I guess that's fairly useless for us at this point. And we probably hopper out of it into an adjacent chest if we want to do that. But it's got enough of a, a buffer there that I think we're good for now. So let's make a drill and uh, experiment with this andesite thing. All right, so the drill is made with a, a drill head plus the andesite machine. So let's, uh, I guess we gotta press a couple pieces of iron here. I'm debating whether or not I should go and just, you know, make the wrench 
as well, which is gonna require me to press. I'm probably gonna actually have to mine some gold while I'm underground, so don't let me forget. While I'm underground doing this thing, let me go collect some gold before I come back up to the surface. You're, you're gonna you're gonna remind me, right? Like I'm I'm not gonna not gonna forget this sort of thing because I, I certainly wouldn't. I would never forget something like that. Let's uh, let's put all these kinetic mechanisms and andesite casings to use, and we'll just queue up a whole bunch of andesite machines, as many as we can. There we go, we got 15 of them. And um, all right, there we go, let's make a drill. So I guess the only other thing is we are gonna need to have some stress underground. So either I can run the windmill all the way down, or I can set up some water wheels. I'm gonna run the windmill all the way down. I feel like there's no way that this could go uh, terribly horribly wrong or anything like that. So um, I'm just, you know, gonna go here and then all we gotta do is, you know, I, I suppose I could just dig straight down and then uh, place shafts over my head. Or alternatively, actually, if we wanted to be really smart about this, I could, I could get a, you know, oh yeah, dude. I'm just gonna dig too wide and then I'll have a quick way to drop down because I'll just drop down a shaft into water. Oh, that's gonna be so sick and so definitely incredibly smart. You guys have no idea how smart this is gonna be and I'm definitely not gonna dig down to uh, my death. Actually, this is kind of cool. It's like running alongside the, the track down. So th that means it's gonna be safe because that's how it works. Definitely, for sure. No, oh, God! I'm good! He shoots, he scores! <laughs> okay, hey, that's a, that's a quick trip. Easy way to get down. There we go. Hey, it just opens right up. Perfect! I'll tell you what, I see all I need to do right now is I just need to line up underneath it, and then I can, you know, just take the cobble back up, right? And then put the water, so this will be... The water goes here, easy. And then the, co well actually, I suppose the uh, cobblestone, uh, or I'm gonna need to dig deeper to bring it down to bedrock. But you get the idea, like, you know, this is, it's efficient, right? Cause look, I can just send this all the way down, right? Thanks to Create's beautiful block placing system. Oop. All right. Hey, that was actually like a lot quicker than I thought it would be. Let's take this down to bedrock. I'll worry about the water later. And then obviously we're gonna have to speed up the mechanism a little bit, um, but we're gonna wanna be able to just uh, have like a staircase down here. And what are we at right now? Our y equals 12. All right, let me get this area set up. Yeah, uh, we could use some rotation speed controllers at some point because that would simplify this a bit. Anyway, a lot of gears. So the way that I envision this working here, and I don't, I've never used a drill before. So, okay, it does work like that. So if I put the drill on the end there, my idea is hopefully if I put a block right there, it gets broken. Heck yeah, let's go. I didn't test this in another world. I'm learning as I go, but this is good. Can I get hurt if I walk into the drill? Yes, I can. Ouch, that's two and a half hearts. Anyway, so the idea that I have basically is going across this way. I'm gonna have the andesite generating or the diorite, whatever it is. It's gonna be generating right here. And then a piston on a clock is gonna hopefully go and, you know, keep pushing this into the drill here where then I'll have a hopper that catches right underneath, puts it into a chest, and then at that point we'll figure out what we're gonna do with it. But this spot actually, right where it wired down into, it just ended up being like a, a perfect layout for this. Gold, before I forget, let me, I was just about to get lava. Oh, also there's some randomium ore that I wanna, I want, I've, I've been holding off. I've seen a few of these around, but I'm, what the frick? Uh oh, oh God, what are you? What the frick was happening there? Blue tinsel garland, how how cute. I wanna only open these in the episodes because they're kinda cool. Um, but I need, I need gold. Is that much of an ore right there? Or is it just gonna be like one singular piece? Just one singular piece. All right, if we do that, sick. Okay, perfect. Generates in the right spot. And now all I have to do is just, did I forget to bring down wood? Because that would be very embarrassing for the sake of not being able to make the redstone torches in order to do the clock, but um, Everything is gonna be great here. Let me just make the piston. No, I brought down the wood. I just put it in the chest up here because I was trying to clear things out and be very smart. Okay, so let's make a piston here. And then of course, like we can just test this really quick. Um, I did forget to bring down a hopper, but don't worry. I remembered the extra wood, which is gonna prevent me from making sticks. 
I really needed to bring down more wood. I'm just gonna turn this into a hopper because that has its own inventory. There we go. I'm gonna put that just down here for now. And then the piston's gonna go here, right? Facing the wrong way, you fool. Piston's gonna go here. And then if we say, you know, just put a button down on this, or actually let's make a stick and we'll do a lever. And if we just engage this, that breaks. Yeah, drops it in the hopper, breaks. Yes, oh my God, there we freaking go. And let's just double check. Yep, brilliant. I said brilliant again, I need to catch myself. Okay, uh, let me see if I can get a clock here. If not, we haven't headed into the nether yet. I could do that and just get some quartz and get repeaters. Yeah, honestly, I think I just need to go to the nether and get some quartz because repeaters will make it so much easier to like time this so that it's going, you know, after this is already done drilling. So um, it's nether time, I guess. Should I bring down ladders so that I can just have like an easier up and down and also like, can I put water here? Hey, it won't flow anywhere. It's uh. It's a risky one, but I think I gotta do that to come back down. <laughs> now I have the ability to put some ladders down in order to climb back up. So, all right, here we go. I'm surely not gonna die doing this, right? There's no way that he would die doing it. He died doing it. What did I hit? Did I put down a shaft there accidentally? I may have uh, put down a shaft. <laughs> At least we've learned there's a gravestone mod. Here's the awkward part where all of my iron was also on my bot. Actually, no, I did just smelt some more iron here. So I have some, but also at the same time, I'm like, do I want to waste my iron? It's still kind of a limited resource getting back to where I was an idiot. <laughs> the answer is, I I don't know about that. Here, hold on, though. I'm going to, don't worry, because we had a little, a little sneaky peek window in here, right? And then hey, there's my body. Uh, this is, it's going to be great. What? Did I land on? I must have landed on a shaft, right? Like, that's the only explanation that makes any sense, is I accidentally, like, with the creates whole block placing mechanism, <laughs> landed inconveniently on a solid object. <laughs> Hey, hey, there's my body. So what did we, uh, what did we hit? What did we, what did we hit here? Transfer items, thank you for that. Um, <laughs> you can go away now. Hey, what, wait, what, what was I, what was I on? Was it a shaft? I can't tell. Yeah, it was a shaft. That probably hurt a bit. <laughs> and this time I'm telling you, I'm gonna be able to make it down really, really well. I just can't put down any, but God damn, there's, there it goes. Okay, here we go. Now that there's no shaft in the way, yeah. He does it. He does it. Now he just risks being blown up by a creeper. Okay, you know what? No, I'm sick and tired of you guys. I'm sick and tired of you guys. Oh, wait, no, if I put the ladder here, I'm not going to be able to drop down into the water. Oh, no, it's like I have to do another uh, thing on the other side. I'm going to do this. Oh, yeah, that's going to be... No, that's going to be pain in the butt to mine as I dig up. I'll worry about this later. All right, flint and steel. And then I got to figure out where would I place a portal? If I was thinking that I was going to go and place a portal and also I should probably bring this in. I don't need to spend too much time in the nether. We're not trying to find, you know, a fortress or anything like that. We're just trying to find ourselves some quick quartz and be good to go. Um, let's see. Dude, this thing just must, must crank out so much wood. It's going to be so good once so we can like wire this up to the saws and, and get it all processing into planks and stuff. Our automation is going to be popping off. I'll put the portal... I don't know. Over here, I kind of want it out of the way of, you know, where all the factories are going, just so that it doesn't interfere with things at all. Maybe we'll end up moving it at some point. I know people would like to see probably a nice build, a, a shrine to encapsulate the nether portal or something. For now, I just want it so I'm not hearing whoosh, 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 while I'm working on everything. All right, let's hope for some quick quartz. Oh, right, it's got biomes of plenty. Looking fancy. Hey, there we go. Easy. Easy quartz. Now we can get some repeaters and make a nice, actually efficient clock here. Wait, is there? Oh, right. Of course there's cobalt because we have tinkers and stuff. Oh, dude, 100% I'm going to want to work towards making like a, some tinkers tools at some point. Oh, God, don't blow up the portal. I swear, this is how I'm greeted in here. Should have applied power four. Should have applied power four. Where's more quartz? How did I find the singular quartz vein? And like, that's that. 
No more. You're gonna force me to cross the thorny lava thing in front of the ghast if I want to get more. Oh, just kidding. There's a little bit more up here. I think I'll be fine after just like two quartz veins. Probably, probably all that I need just to get the repeaters up and running. And then, you know, we can focus on some other stuff here after. I'm sure there's, you know, probably some cool like structures and stuff that can be found. It's not, it's not all just technical in Create Above and Beyond. There are, you know, some exploration things as we've seen with, as I've seen, I haven't shown it yet, but you know, as I saw in between episode with the, the little dungeon thing that I found. So I'm gonna have to check that out at some point. All right, 19 should be plenty good. So, all right, Nether, it's been fun and I'll be back later. Thanks for having me. It's been a great time other than the gas being kind of mean and stuff like that. Didn't really greet me nicely. I always know where uh, my windmill is located with the giant red death marker coming up it. Great stuff. Surely this time it's smooth sailing all the way down. Okay, that was much better. God, that was elegant. 10 out of 10 diving. So cool. We got some redstone torches and uh, I got my crafting table set up here. Let's make, I don't know exactly how many repeaters we're going to need to start with, but let's, let's try three and see if we can get this thing going nicely. So I don't know, maybe like we should do, we'll set them on bigger delays for now because I don't know how long it's gonna take for the drill. We could speed up the drill even further if we wanted to. And then let's just do that actually. I know how to set up clocks, everybody. There we go. All right, let's give this a try. Okay, needs to be a little slower, um, but we're on the right track. It's just, oh wait, actually, you know what? If there is no block to push, like if it, it can't push into there because that's just solid walls. So the speed, I wonder if that doesn't even matter actually come to think of it. Yeah. Cause it'll only go once the drill has actually mined. Cool. I guess the only issue is like, if I want to be able to open up the chest over here, I might need to do like another hopper into beyond this so that I can open it. But yeah, this, this works. All right, we're going to need to break this. It's going to cause a bit of a mess. Uh, did I get the, I got the hopper out of it. It basically, I'm just going to put the chest down here. Right, and then wire the hoppers into it, and hopefully that'll work. Hopper number one there, and then uh, just trying to navigate around this whole thing being a, a live operation, but we get rid of that, and then we do that, then perfect. Okay, it should start filtering into the chest now, right? Cool. This is probably gonna hit capacity pretty quickly, and that's where the whole, you know, putting it onto a, a belt and piping it out or, you know, belting it out, whatever you want to call it. It's probably going to be our next step, which is why this whole, dude, this whole area worked out really, really well because I think the belt will need to be below, but we have an extra uh, Y value down. So it's like, this was the perfect layout here for the bedrock, the top level to lead into the bottom and still give us enough real estate to hopefully be able to um, get things exported out or we can do the lift system or whatever it is. But for now, we have andesite automatically generating. So I consider that a win. Honestly, the speed at which this goes, like if I were to AFK for a while, I feel like we don't necessarily need to set up multiples of these. This, if you left it for several hours, like you're gonna, you're gonna get quite a lot. I, I don't know how crazy it's gonna get as we get into the, the later chapters and it's gonna be like, no, actually you need about 50,000 million andesite per minute. But for now, I feel like it's, it's good. I like it, dude, let's go. Oh, so yeah, I do just want to draw attention to the number one comment on this video, which is why, why did you, say you had to go into the nether to get quartz for repeaters. Here's the thing. I was thinking about comparators and I got my wires crossed and now what I've gone and done is made myself look like a fool. But it's okay because we have quartz now in case we do need to make a comparator and we have a, a nether portal in case we do need to go to the nether. So it, I consider that a win at the end of the day because we were going to have to go there at, at some point. It's just that now we have it. Anyway, I think that's been some good work. I think we deserve some builder's tea after all of that successful setup down there. Mmm, nice and refreshing for me, a minion. I want to see what the sifter's been up to, because uh, the beauty of automation is it still goes while you're setting up other automation. Okay, so we've got sand and, and clay balls, good to go. So I think you use an encased fan on the sand, and that's how you generate more clay in an automated fashion on top of whatever is generating here. Now, I, I don't know for sure if the orange sand, the white sand also 
get uh, converted into clay when you put them in front of an encased fan. I'm gonna hope, but otherwise we'll just have to, you know, set more up. I just don't know how you automate, like, can you, oh, maybe you can deploy the nets onto them. I'm not sure if it works that way, but speaking of, we should give some deployers a try and see if we can kind of reconfigure the tree farm mechanism. Okay, so for deployers, we need golden hands. So we need to press 16 of our gold. And then it's a much easier crafting recipe than uh, it usually is, because usually I think they use brass. I should add a chest with a with a funnel or a tunnel. I don't know the difference between funnels and tunnels when it comes to created stuff like that. I'll have to learn, I'm sure, as we get further into this. But uh, let's keep pressing. And 16, good to go. And and now let's make a few of the hands. Talk to the hand. That should be the name of the like advancement when you make these. I, I just think it'd be a good one. But you know, what, what do I know? Not, not much. There we go. All right, four deployers. Now I think it might actually be better to use a radial chassis here. Oh wait, also, hold on. You know, I might need to, should I make a wrench? I should probably make a wrench. I feel like that's overdue. I have the perfect amount of iron, bro. This was destiny, dude. Okay, let's toss these down and make a wrench so that I can, I, cause I need to adjust like the range on the radial chassis. I think I'm actually gonna end up just like completely deconstructing the the whole thing as I have it set up kind of for the most part, but um, hopefully it'll all go back together and be well improved over what it was before. I just don't know if it like taps into the inventory inside of the chest in order to draw in saplings. And I'm hoping that it works that way, but I guess we're gonna find out quite soon here. Okay, so the idea I think is we're gonna do a radial chassis instead of doing linear chassis all the way across. And then we're gonna just put deployers right here, super simple, might not even need to reconfigure them with a wrench. And then we wanna make sure that they're only using the saplings, assuming that they can work off of the attached inventory. And then I'm just gonna plop down a, I guess I could just put the chest like here, or I could put it on on top, let me just put the chest here maybe. And then can I use the wrench in order to configure how this is showing, it should like show me a visualization or is it that I need to at least connect, I think I might need to connect one side to it with, with the glue. Is that is that what you want from me? I think, and now you're gonna, and now you're gonna show me that it's, yeah, okay, wait, perfect, okay. And, oh, hey, would you look at that? Okay, so, uh, well, let's let's plant some saplings, I suppose, or actually what I could do, oop, what I should have done is, um, let me, let me do this. Maybe if I just put some saplings into the chest here, we can see if it works off of an attached inventory or not. I don't know for sure. I might also just need to get some trees planted and then see if it works off of that. But um, here goes nothing. Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. Okay, at least one of them, it, it did plant something. Uh, we'll see how it goes once a tree grows. Maybe I should get some bone meal. Well, anyway, in the meantime, let me just, I'll plant some saplings. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if once a tree grows, maybe it has to go off of the collected drops. I, I think we're on to something. I, I just, um, I don't know for sure. Okay, so the question is, will the deployer then go and it didn't de deploy the set. Why aren't you deploying the sampling? You're supposed to deploy the sampling. Okay, so it's, hold on. Got some troubleshooting to do. All right, so what it seems like is happening is it's not always in collecting from whatever tree it's breaking, effectively putting the samplings through into each of the deployers. But you can see if I actually just like load up this chest with a ton of samplings, then I think what we need to do is basically just populate the buffer into the deployers because I think they can hold a stack each and then it shouldn't then pass that back in. Actually, you know what I'll do is I'm just going to click a stack into each one of these. There we go. And then I'll see if I, if I do this, I don't think it's gonna feed any more into it. It's just gonna, on the next rotation, go around and, you know, put it into there. But, okay, you can see it's actually working now. So it's like, as long as the deployers themselves have the saplings in the built-in buffer, 
then they will go around and attempt to deploy where they can. So it should fill in a couple there. It looks like, looks like I didn't actually, uh, wait, do it. Yeah, there we go. Perfect, perfect. You're going. Great job. Great, you're doing amazing. It looks like I had some extra real estate here, unless, I don't know if the saws can reach these. The saws might not reach those trees, but that's fine. And, okay, cool. So now, here we go. Let me try to grow a tree really quick, just to, you know, see if it, places down a sapling after it breaks it, because the buffer should still be full inside of each of the deployers. All right, here we go. Let me just check, make sure that it plants behind it. So there we go. It might not be full automated if it's not accepting um, any new saplings from the trees it's harvesting, but it should still last for quite a while unless, well, I mean, we might just get some trees that aren't getting chopped down, but that's, uh, there we go. We got a deployer system set up, so it's more automated than it was before, and I'll just have to monitor it and see if it actually is like fully automated or not, but cool. All right, so we got our andesite going. We've now got a, an even better wood setup than what we had before. We've got sugarcane not fully automated, but we also have sand going in the background. The only issue is how we deal with the nets when those expire, because they only do 300 blocks at a time. But all in all, I'd say a good bit of progress there. And mending books, mending books are pretty helpful too. So um, yeah, I guess that's a good place for us to leave things off for this episode. So thanks everybody for tuning in. Hopefully you've enjoyed me being a, a minion and stuff. and. Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel to stay tuned for future episodes, and um, check the playlist if you missed anything you want to jump into in a, a next episode that might already be out. I'll see you later.